This video is only for educational purposes. This is a video of the release of the anterior intertius nerve when the patient has anterior intertius nerve syndrome. Anterior intertius nerve syndrome occurs in long-standing carpal tunnels. After the patient is affected by carpal tunnel syndrome and he does not get treated, the pain starts radiating upwards and then the anterior intertius nerve gets involved. The symptoms are that the patient when he tries to write, he writes a sentence and then his flexor pollicis longus gives way. And this is usually a motor problem. And for diagnosis of anterior intertius nerve syndrome, the patient will always tell you that he has problems in writing or doing work and dropping things from the hand. And uh, when you examine the patient and you press here in the forearm at this point and you move the arm inside, patient will have numbness and tingling going down. The other thing is, you ask the patient to make an O sign and patient will not be able to make an O sign. The third thing is that you check the flexor pollicis longus, ask the patient to flex and you extend and patient will not be able to resist it. Like this. Thank you. Thank the pronator teres and the brachioradialis are palpated. There is a dip between them. The incision is marked in between at the radial border of the pronator teres. Skin and the fat are incised till you reach the deep fascia. When you reach the deep fascia, you find the brachioradialis muscle on one side, the pronator teres on the other side, and in the middle you have a gap. And that's where you need to open, as you can see here. As soon as you open this gap and you go deep, in this case, we find the branches from the brachial artery, most probably the radial artery and its vena committants coming right into view over the pronator teres. So you carefully go below it, make sure you don't damage the vessels. It's very common to encounter the branches of the brachial artery here in this case. Careful dissection is needed here, making sure we don't damage any branches coming from the radial artery also. Once we have isolated and saved the artery, Careful dissection is not done in this area, making sure you protect the artery and its branches. You keep following the pronator teres muscle and you open proximally and distally. Here we are trying to open proximally to see if there is any less certus fibrosis which may be causing compression which needs release and we release the tissue proximally, then put our scissor in to make sure there's no more compression proximally. Then we go distally, follow the pronator teres muscle. We are looking for the tendon of the pronator teres right now, which will be whitish in color. And as you follow it below, there you can see the white tendon coming. And that is the tendon of the pronator teres, the first tendon that we are going to release before we can get to the median nerve. We release this tendon once we've isolated it. So we have more space to go below. Once we cut this tendon, we see another muscle coming below, which are fibers of the brachialis. As you dissect this, the white fibers below that can be seen, which from which we am separating the pronator teres, that is the brachialis muscle. We keep following our pronator teres down and we put a retractor deep into the parts we have released. And as we go down, we finally see some nerve fibers coming into view. In this case, the branch that we first encounter is the anterior interosseous nerve. Remember the anterior interosseous nerve supplies the index long fingers and the thumb. So it's on the radial side and right next to it is the vasa nervosum. And that's why I'm dissecting very carefully as to not to damage my, the blood supply to the nerve. As I pull out the anterior interosseous nerve and the vasa nervosum, you can see the main median nerve coming into view.
we now go and divide some of the muscle which is present just above the nerve. Uh, we make sure the nerve is safe. We take scissors or we take hemostat. We raise the muscle and then we, we cut it with the diathermy or a bipolar. Here you can see the nerve now slowly, slowly coming into view more and more. This is the anterior interosseous nerve and we're going to take it in a sling so we can pull it a bit and have better visualization of the main nerve. Slowly and carefully we mobilize the median nerve. Now you check for compression of the nerve. You do this by pronating the hand and putting your finger above the nerve. You can feel the fibers of the pronated areas and FDS compressing the nerve. Now you see that the compression is caused by these fibers of the pronated teres and you need to do stepwise release of the superficial head of the pronated teres as you can see these fibers. You have raised these fibers in your hand and now you do stepwise release of these fibers as you lengthen the pronated teres. This is one of the major causes of compression of the median nerve along with the fibers of the flexor digitorum superficialis. Now you keep following the nerve more distally. Remember, there's still another site of compression left, which is the fibers of the flexor digitorum superficialis. So you follow the nerve. This is the nerve that you have. Make sure you hold it lightly. You don't want to damage the nerve. Now we have enough place to take the nerve also in a sling. So you have taken the nerve in a sling after isolating it. Our vessel nervosum is still intact. We haven't damaged it. The anterior interosseous nerve is also in a sling. And now we're going to follow it distally, feeling for the FDS, which is compressing the nerve and is the last point of compression of anterior interosseous nerve. We now go distally and we take the fibers of FDS in hemostat. With the help of the Debeki, we take them out and we slowly cut those fibers. Um, these are the fibers coming off from the bone. You can see those fibers. The white color fibers are right there with the muscle and we slowly release it. We have to be very, very careful. You don't want to damage the nerve, but you need to release these fibers if you're going to have improvement in the patient and you release them till you find that the nerve is lying free. The nerve has now been released and as you can see it's lying freely and the surgery is done. This is two months post-surgery and you can see the patient can make an O sign and has good movements.